Hey everyone, this is Brian at Provision Studios, and today I'm going to make a video on working with virtual drums. You've got a song, you recorded it with a band in the studio, they've recorded it to a click track, you've got it all tempo mapped so you know where your verses are, you know where your choruses are, everything's broken down, and now you got to put drums on it. In today's video, I'm going to show uh, the process working with addictive drums, but I mean, there's plenty of real good virtual drum instruments out there um, on the market. Um, two to come to mind that uh, I have worked with with good results are Superior Drummer and um, also Steven Slate Drums. They are both excellent um, for this type of work. I just wanted to show the advantage of using um, drums like this once you have your tempo map done into the song where basically you're just dragging in the uh, the clips or samples that you uh, you want to use in the song um, it, this is sometimes done prior to a session recording session where the um, members of the band may come in and record to uh, pre-laid out drum tracks but I don't always have the luxury of getting that much time with the band or familiarity with the band where I know the songs enough to where I can go in and put in drum beats for them um, normally it's uh, I'll get a phone call hey can we come record we want to record two songs and then we go from there and then after it's done then we start working on building the songs up. So if you're in a situation like that, this process will, will definitely help you out. It will show you the steps that I use to get quick results. All right, let's dive in and see what we, see what we can get to. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to put a virtual drum kit into a uh, rock or um, hard rock song. This is a band that recorded here in my studio. So we are going to take those tracks and use them for the basis to create a, um, a, a drum, you know, drum track with. All right. First thing to do is create a new track. I like to put my drum kit right after my bass and right before my uh, session effects, which. Um, we are usually like delay and reverb uh, channels that I'm going to route more than one type of instrument through. That's why I, you know, I call them uh, session effects. Their purpose is to uh, be more than just uh, like a special tape delay for a guitar or something. They're like more universal. Anyway, so I'm going to have a stereo instrument track. Rename it drums, because that's always the first thing we do when we create a track. We name it to avoid confusion later. Um, then today we are going to use um, addictive drums, specifically addictive drums too. <clears throat> Let me route the kit properly. I want this to go to my drum bus. All right, so we got drum track. Addictive drums, two on it, and now we need to select our kit. I think I like that. I'm going now to go to the beats, where this is where you will, um, this is basically your sample library. So you'll see here, we have um, all beats, favorite beats, my beats, XLM beats. So you can create, you can move things around, you can assign certain beats that you use more often than others. You can click on certain styles uh, based upon the type of song. Um, 
You can also, here in your display window, you can see I'm going to scroll through, you'll see hundreds of beats. These are all different. And some of these have multiple beats inside of them. So normally when you see something that says song, you're going to have a complete song mapped out to where you can use bits and pieces of it. You know, you got the whole thing right here. You can drag this in. Uh, you got a bridge, a chorus, intro. Anyway, you can see you got all kind of cool options with addictive drums. Um, you can also uh, use certain um, things to narrow down what is showed up, sh what shows up here in this win in this window. Uh, for an example, time signature, tempo. The uh, category of the song, or the genre of the song, and also the sample library you want to pull from. So um, I like to start with time signature, find it, you know, find out the time signature of my song is, and narrow things down that way. All right, so now I know that all the beats I got here are in four four, which is what this song's in. So that's a good starting point. You can also filter out like fills if you just want straight beats. You can turn that off. If you just want fills, you can click off on beats. And then your results window will just show you fills in 4-4 four, four time. All right. So um, then you can do your tempo. If you want to uh, have um, certain beats that were created in a style that are close to the tempo that your song is in, you can do that. Um, you can also select the style of music you know, if you want a hip-hop beat. No, all right. If you wanted a Latin beat, all right, so on and so forth. I like to um, keep this set to all because um, more often than not, the beat that I end up putting in a song is not the genre the song is in. Uh, you even heard that hip hop beat. I could think of a million instances where I would use that beat, and none of them are hip hop. So I mean, uh, th a lot of these things can can bleed over into other styles of music. So I like to enter with that type of open mind. Right, anyway, you can also see when you when you do select the beat, you normally get multiple variations of that same beat, and um. You'll see uh, a tempo that the sample was recorded at, you know, so. All right, that, that may be okay for the situation where you're um, just trying to get something in the ballpark. I like to hit sync tempo. So that whatever beat it is that I'm um, previewing, I'm able to hear it in the tempo of the song. So it's sort of a real world, a real world uh, example or comparison to to what the environment that beat's going to be living in. Much slower. And then finally, the one thing I wanted to show inside the addictive drums uh, plugin is the uh, sync play stop what this does is this allows you to control both addictive drums in your in your doll from the dolls uh transport so um the key to this is to make sure that wherever you want addictive drums to start that you have your playhead at that so let's say at the intro i want to hear how this drum beat's going to sound at the intro i don't want my marker to be there I want it to be on the intro so that when I hit play I get the beat starting on the downbeat all right so the good part about addictive drums it, it is a uh, uh, dry uh, drag and drop functionality so I've got my drum track right here track 23 I've got my beat right here I can just drag it right onto the drum track and let go and now I've got my drum track 
in place. So the last thing you want to do before you start editing your beat is you want to make sure you turn off the sync play stop button or else this will always be playing in the background when you're trying to listen to just one beat. So if you start making changes here, you're not going to hear them because you're going to have addictive drums playing underneath. And you'll be like, well, why are they changing? Anyway, I guess you can tell I've done that before. So, I'm, All right, when you're ready, you just double click and then you'll get to see your sample, how it looks inside the MIDI editor of Pro Tools. Uh, this is all the instruments that are, all of the drums that are being played in that beat um, broken down. So you can see right here, we, we've got our kick are all along this line. Our snares are all along this line. Closed hi-hat. Another, another hi-hat there. Half open hi-hat. And we've got a full open hi-hat. What do we got here? Wide open. Tom fill there. And a crash. Okay. So, we got all that in. Now we can start editing the beat. Um, let's say you don't want this fill right here. Like you want, you want the beat to stay straight. You could very easily just take these and move them over. So now instead of that fill there, you're going to have... So we got that covered. Let's take that out. All right. Um, so let's let's listen to what we got. All right. Very good. All right. I want this to be at the beginning of the song as well. But all I want is a drum and snare version of it because it is a very ambient intro. So I can take this over here, double click on it to open up my MIDI editor, select everything but the kick and snare, and mute the notes. So now at the beginning of the song, I've got this. Probably don't want that. So now on the MIDI editor, I can do one of two things. I can do one of several things. Firstly, inside the uh, the edit window, I can create a loop. In the clip looping uh, a window, you can see you've got the number of loops, so you can tell how many times you wa you want that that loop to repeat you could create loop length like let's say you want it for 16 measures you can do that uh, loop until end of session or next clip uh, what that does is uh, let's say this wasn't here if I hit loop until end of session and I hit OK it would run it all the way to my end marker right there so it would go up to that point with with that beat um, in this case because I have a, a clip there I can select loop until end or next clip and it gives me one loop and you'll see the loop symbol right here letting you know that this is a looped clip alright another way to do it is to use the duplicate or duplicate function which is command D it just gives you a copy of what you have selected that's what I usually use um, if you're big into MIDI editing you could literally just copy everything sorry about that drag it on over 
again, we're accomplishing the same thing. We are, we are creating um, uh, the beat. We are fashioning the beat the way that we want it. All right, I want... I want to use the duplicate function because that's what I preferred to use. So all right, I got my beat right here. All right, so let's pick it up from the second part of the intro. All right, so all these are, are out. We don't want any of that. What I do want is I want to unmute that, so I want I want to hear this sound. I want this to play now. All right, so that's going to sound like this. All right, so from the top, this is what we got. So we've got, we can do the duplicate feature there to, to get the beat to go through the whole length of the intro. We can edit these now so we can put some variation into them. So that one stays straight. We got a little fill there. We got probably, probably what I would do is, is even take this one out. So we have something like this. So there we go. All right. Now we can go into our Let's try another variation on this. This will be the verse. I'm I'm demoing a uh, uh a hi-hat variation for the verse. Again, I clicked sync play stop to make sure that when I hit play it's going to go start right on the the verse. Let's 
let's drag that in and see how it looks. I might like to have it like this. I think I would like to have That like that. Let me give that a listen. What that might be good. got that going on um, we can take this guy put him right here and then we could take another one and uh, the good part about MIDI and the reason why I wanted to run up to this point I'm going to stop after this but I wanted to show this is here we have a tempo change it goes from 90 to 95 and because we are working in MIDI, um, when I drag the MIDI clip over top of the timeline, because I have it properly tempo mapped, the, the clip automatically conforms to the tempo. I just want to hear this real quick. Yeah. We'll take this, put it right here. All right. Let me turn off sync play stop and show you guys what I got going on here real quick. I'm gonna I want this to run out. And because, all right, let, let me, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Here's, here is the song going up into the chorus where and right here you'll see the tempo change. with MIDI I can take my verse which is right here and although it is a a a, a uh, sample that was dragged in uh, onto a 90 beat segment of the song if I copy it over to this part it automatically conforms to the 95 BPM And that's how I would take a recorded song in the studio and add a, uh, a, a drum beat to it, um, 
in, in this case with addictive drums. But you can use Superior Drummer, um, Stephen Slate Drums, all of those, they function basically the same way on a uh, timeline. The key here is that the song was recorded with a click track to a tempo map that you figured out beforehand so that when you're dragging clips, they are being added to a, a, uh, a, an in-time song. And that you're not, you know, if, if this was recorded in free time, where basically you just set a mic up in the room and the guys just played, you couldn't use this method. You'd have to play it in on a, uh, uh, a MIDI instrument, whether it's a keyboard where you're playing in the, uh, the drums, you're drawing it in yourself, however you'd, need, you'd want to do it. This way is the most optimal way when working with drum samples because they were all recorded, the drummers recorded them to click tracks. You know, so um, that's, that's the way to go when you got stuff like this done in the studio to a click track. All right, so there you go. We've taken a song that was recorded in the studio, added some drums to it, and we are well on our way to having a finished product um, all within an hour. So uh, that's, that's good studio work right there. Um, that These drums can be mixed, although if you think about it, when you're dealing with a lot of these uh, virtual instruments by Addictive Drums and Superior Drummer and uh, Steven Slate Drums, the ones I mentioned earlier, those are really probably recorded in really good rooms. They've already been treated with compression and stuff. So you can be a little bit, you don't have to be as, uh, uh, you know, just, you don't have to, you don't have to do as much mixing to the, these samples as you would maybe the rest of the song or for drums that were recorded in another room that, with, you know, mics that weren't as to, uh, up to the quality of these mics. So, um, if you have any questions about what I did here today, please feel free to email me, bbuck822 at gmail.com. You can go to my website and um, check that out, provisionstudios.com. That's P-R-O-V-I-Z-I-O-N-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com. There is a uh, contact tab you can click on there. You can just click on it and I'll get a message, you know, that... Uh, you know, you've sent me um, a notice. And um, by all means, uh, uh, like, share, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can feel free to uh, make any comments or any questions down in the comment section below. And until uh, next time, I hope you guys have a great time mixing. Bye-bye now.